Uh, my project was a literature review on the technological advances on the mechanics of cephalopod biomimicry. Um, so some background info, uh, we want to understand what cephalopods are. So cephalopods are in the phylum mollusca alongside gastropods and bivalves. So that can include slugs and snails and clams and mussels. But the cephalopod family itself consists of octopus, squid, and cuttlefish. So it consists of any color-changing invertebrate. So what we want to understand is the why and how do cephalopods have this ability to do this. So an example of this is like this. So as the diver approaches the cephalopod, it's able to blend in with its background, but it's not only just simply its color, but it also matches the lighting and the shape. So as we get into it, underneath cephalopod skin, they have three different organs. They're called chromatophores, iridophores, and leucophores. Um, so chromatophores are responsible for the main color changing aspect. Um, iridophores have, excuse me. Um, iridophores and leucophores are pretty similar. They both reflect light, but iridophores reflect iridescent colors while leucophores are able to scatter full spectrum light. So here, chromatophores have different pigment sacs that open up when the nerves are stimulated. So they have little dots on their skin that can either expand or shrink. So it goes from a shrunken form to an expanded form. And then iridophores here have sort of like, a, they're stacked like plates almost. And so that gives it a Bragg reflector effect. So a Bragg reflector effect is when two different materials have a different refractive index. So that just means um, it measures how the wave or wavelengths of light are reflected through different kinds of materials. And then leucophores, I said, were pretty similar, but the main difference between leucophores and iridophores are iridophores reflect iridescent colors. So that's like if you took like a bubble and you looked at it under sunlight, but the colors that you see on the bubble um, really differ from the angle that you're looking at it. So in this case, when a cephalopod is looking at its surroundings compared to the POV of its predator or prey, it has to be able to adjust to what's around it. So as we're getting into this and we understand what a cephalopod is, um, this is on cephalopod biomimicry. So what is biomimicry? So biomimicry is our ability to develop materials based on organism adaptive functions in their own environments, such as spider webs. So we're turning spider web patterns into glass or of course, silkworms and we use silk as a material and clothing. But in this case, why are we doing a report on or mimicking cephalopods. So cephalopods offer a lot of developments in biomedical and physical transformation technologies, but together these can all be put into soft robotics and bionic technology for the convenience, concealment, and con comfort of users. So oh, um, um, I'll start getting into the devices that researchers have been producing based on this concept. So these are artificial iridophores or leucophores. So here we layer um, graphene oxide, and this is a reflectin film. So reflectin is a protein that's inside of iridophores that can be used for the cephalopod to be able to reflect light. So they fabricated reflectin onto a film and they've sandwiched it in between the graphene oxide and the substrate. So it also creates a similar Bragg reflector-like effect. So the stimulus here, when you take a doctor blade and you're straining it against the film, you can adjust the amount of pressure on it and it creates sort of a, a gradient. But alternatively, if there's not pressure strain, um, researchers have tried using a chemical stimulus with acid vapor so with exposure to acid vapor, the reflectant film itself can expand and the hue changes. 
And then these are artificial chromatophores. So the dielectric membrane is just a conductive like silicone housing, so it acts as the skin. The pigmented gel itself acts like the sac, the pigment sacs, and the transparent electrode is like a nerve sending a signal to the sac itself. So when electric stimulus is applied to the gel, it expands and the hue is able to change. But similarly, if we're looking at a more advanced version of this device, um, we have three different layers with three different pigments. So either pigments can be turned on individually or they can work alongside each other. So in this example here, you're able to create sort of like a broad kind of color palette with this device. And then we've gone over color changing aspects. So in order to create shape and texture on their skin. So researchers have produced this hyperelastic luminescent skin where it mimics the way light is able to shine. Light is able to reflect on different parts of the cephalopod skin. So here we have um, silicone housing, and then we have two electrode hydrogel and phosphorus sandwich right in between it. And here they're straining and stretching the skin itself. So you can see that the light is sort of like orienting itself or moving itself to be able to match with the surface that's being stretched. And then in these three examples, they have little, they're able to control the amount of light that's being displayed. So in the pixelated screen, we have squares of three, five, and eight. And this is just an example of how cephalopods are able to control the amount of light that's being hit on that part of the skin. And so as we start getting into it, we're going to be combining all those different devices and we can put them in together to soft robotics. So soft robotics is a field of robotics that just use a lot less rigid materials. So here we have what's called an ultra thin transparent synthetic sensor. So these sensors can be used in HMI devices, which are called human machine interfaces. Um, a lot of people use these as medical devices because they need to be able to track their health and vital signs. But the main issue is a lot of these are either too bulky or if they're too small, they won't work as well and won't have the same functions. So in order to develop a better solution, they come up with like a transparent sort of HMI device that just sticks to your skin. And so, so it's used for the comfort and for the concealment of the user itself. But one major advantage of this is for people that are physically disabled or physically impaired, you could take their bionic parts, such as prosthetic legs and arms, and you can use them on top of them alongside synthetic skin. So it has the same bodily functions, but you can still feel sort of the texture of skin itself. But this all comes together with the color changing aspect and shape changing aspect of cephalopods as you can orient the way that the skin will be working on the body parts, as well as you can modify really whatever you want onto the skin. Mm. So basically robotic skin or synthetic skin on robotic body parts is a really great way for prosthetic users to be able to conceal their devices without it looking too bulky or too obvious. And it's a really great way for them to just blend in really. Um, for what's on the horizon with cephalopod biomimicry, with where we are right now, there's a lot of more upcoming research as we speak about it, and hopefully there'll be more licensed medical devices. But some takeaways from this project. So cephalopod biomimicry is able to greatly support the physically impaired. Um, bio the biomimicry field itself can greatly enhance our lives as we can take aspects of nature and we can combine it with what we want to see in our future. Um, but as we look at nature from a different angle, we can take we can harness different aspects of the field 
and we can utilize that to build our own futures. Um, I'd like to thank my mentor for being here and watching me struggle a little bit. Um, I've had a really great time. Honestly, before this project, I've never really had any research experience and I don't, or I never really knew what I wanted to do with or past my high school career. Um, honestly, I still might not really know, but I think this is sort of like initiative or like, I guess, a start into what I really want to see for my future. So thanks, Adrian. <laughs>